So what we found was that micronuclei can clearly separate themselves from the main nucleus. If they're attached to the main nucleus, you can't count them as a micronuclei. You would skip that cell. You can only count, you can only score cells that are binucleus, which are the two nucleuses plus the micronuclei. Um, we scored about 500,000 dati cells per dose, and we made a curve, which I'll show you next. Um, we found that as the radiation doses increases, the gamma ray exposure, um, the micronuclear frequency also increases. And we also found that when we got the samples, as the time increased, so did the micronuclear. So this is what a dose response curve looks like. So you have zero grade to eight grade, and you have, for example, two grade have about 0.5 um, micronuclei per cell. And you can see zero grade is a normal cell, two by nucleus, they'll divide and be normal. Two grade, there's a little bit of damage, you see a micronuclei right there. And then five, five grade, which is a lot of radiation, has four micronuclei, one, two, three, and four. And this is important because eight grade, eight grade radiation, I've counted as many as eight to 10 micronuclei in itself. That's a lot of damage. And it, for the most part, it literally goes up except for 6th and 7th grade, which we're thinking is because when cells are damaged at the rate of 7th grade, sometimes cells just, instead of repairing themselves, they'll say, okay, let's go, um, let's go through the process of apoptosis, which is cell death, and replace it with a new cell. So that's probably why, but then the damage at 8th grade is so much that all these cells are damaged, so it's pretty much like, this, you're still going to see the damage even if the cells go through apoptosis and new cells are there. Um, this is what we found in three of our patients who are confidential, so we just gave them numbers. See, we have 0.1 frequency of micronuclei per cell, then we got to 0.2 after 4 to 6 hours, and after 24 hours, we got to 0.7. So you can see that as time progresses, as the cell tries to repair itself, there's more damage done to micronuclei because the chromosome somewhere else in the cell and the cell forms a binuclear or forms a, sorry, a nucleus around it, a micronuclei. So the micronuclei are a result of the cell trying to repair itself. Um, this is how we, how we get the data for the cells, which is not really important to you guys, but it's pretty much like, for example, patient one is 30 years old, it's a male, non-smoker, which we have to take into account. And chemotherapy, exactly how much, the dosage, and the last day. Because if chemo is done, that's on a Tuesday, and the Wednesday you give them radi radiotherapy, you're not gonna be able to analyze those cells. Those cells are gonna be so degraded in the microscope that you will not be able to see the perfect two nucleuses that you're seeing. This will be like, you'll see like half of it because the cell hasn't been able to repair itself. So what we concluded from the study is that total body radiation doesn't use micronuclei damage. Um, as you increase dosage, micronuclei frequency increases. Um, we also found that the, the higher the dosage of radiation to the patient, the more frequency of um, micronuclei there are. And like, as I said, this, this graph is basically from a normal patient cell that, that we give radiation outside the body. And then when you get the cancer patient, we just put those cells, we just harvest them onto a slide and count. And we find, let's say we find a cancer patient that had about one micronuclei per cell. Then you go back to this curve and you're like, okay, so they must have been given about four grade radiation. And you can tell the hospital, they're either giving them too much or too little radiation compared to what they were supposed to be given. Um, we also found that we can use micronuclei as an index for radiation exposure and the damage, and that we can also regulate the dose of radiation given to patients. Future studies, this is what we're doing, what we did a lot of last year and this year. What we're doing is we're going to continue to examine micronuclei, but we're going to do it in animal cells because we want an in vivo study. We're going to see what happens to a normal healthy person if they were to receive radiation from like a dirty bomb scenario, which would be like if a nuclear bomb was dropped. Like, and people got radiation. Well, how would doctors know how much radiation have you received? They can't just take a human 
and put on the um, a radiation machine and say, okay, you're going to be your test sample, we're going to take your blood, make a curve so that if this ever happens, you can compare other people's blood to it. Instead, they're going to do it with mice because mice and humans react very closely and very similar to radiation. And the micronutrient um, frequency is very similar. So what's going to happen, what we're doing is we're giving mice radiation, taking the um, normal healthy mice, taking their blood, and counting the micronutrient, and doing the curve as I have shown you before in our data. And so that if there's ever, God forbid, a dirty bomb scenario, Let's say seven days after, where people, um, the doctors are able to get to the patient, they can get to them, take their blood, count micronuclei, and say, and compare to the mice graph, and say, okay, this person received five years of radiation from the bomb, this is how we can treat them and make a treatment. Moving on from that, the, chromosome, the chromosomes that I showed you is through a uh, metaphys metasystem software that captures the, um, um, the pictures. We're developing that software to automatically count micronutrients so that we don't have to do it. Because even though micronutrients are faster, we still have to sit on the microscope for two, three, for a year, maybe two, three months a year, and just count. And when you're in the microscope, when you're sitting on the microscope every day, it, it gets fatiguing. So we're trying to count, we're trying to make it faster by doing automatic micronutrients, which is the camera will still take the picture. As if the slide was placed, the camera will take pictures of the whole slide. But when it does do that, it will count micronuclei with it. It will count the micronuclei on that certain picture. Since it's supposed to be um, random, random pictures, so they just, they will count. And then we're going to do a manual test of the same slide, and we're going to see if the machine is right or not. So we're, that's still developing in our department. And lastly, what we're going to do is test patients with partial body radiotherapy. Because um, a lot of people, if they don't have leukemia, if they have pancreatic cancer, for example, they're going to receive radiation only in their pelvic area, not their whole body. So that, well, that brings up the point of fractional versus acute radiation. Fractional radiation is both radiation, let's say you're giving a person one way of radiation, but in fractional terms, what you're doing is giving that one way, one way of radiation in 10 minutes. So if it's in a public area for 10 minutes, a lympho, since we're, do, we're still studying um, blood samples, the blood, the white blood cells that was in your brain might have tra traveled through your public area by then and received the radiation. Compared to if it was acute, you'd be given that one way of radiation within one minute. So that blood cell that was up here might not have traveled it and received the radiation. So when you get a sample from a person with acute, you're gonna find less micronuclei in the whole um, in the whole sample because not all of the blood will damage. Whereas fractional, it transitions better into, and it translates better into TB, TBI because your blood was still able to get the dose. So you're able to see exactly how that happens. And also what we do is we're gonna, um, take the blood sample before to create a baseline because everyone's different, everyone has a different rate of micronutrient in their body. So we're gonna count a baseline, like a curve. Okay, this person, when we got their blood without radiation, had 30% or 0.3. And then we're gonna do one um, during, which is after, right? During the um, treatment and then right after. So that way we can have a curve of how the micronutrient progresses. And um, that's pretty much it. These are some of the references. And I would like to acknowledge my mentor, Dr. Helen Turner, um, the director of the Center for Radiological Research at Columbia University, Dr. Jay Brenner, um, the postdoc at the department, Dr. Bertucci, Dr. Dutta, Ms. Jane Lee, the Center for Radiological Research in Columbia University, Morgan Stanley Children's Hospital, the 90th Medical Program, the Harlem Children's Society, Erin Moore, and Dr. Sack. Thank you.